Hi everyone, welcome to breakfast journal number 17. Oh, there's a hair hanging from a book. It's turning into me. edition I'm going to do some pretty doodles, make slime backwards, and more. For those of you who love satisfying slime mixing, there's going to be a few minutes of that in this video. For those of you who absolutely hate it, you can just skip over it and watch the rest of the stuff I do because I promise it's not just slime. Really quickly before we get into decorating the pages, if you haven't seen my most recent videos, I just posted this pretty artwork video where I chat and kind of go along the process a little bit. And of course this really cool gothic water candle DIY. So if you haven't seen these videos, I was about to clink them together. That would not have been good. I'll link them in the description box below. But now without further ado, let's get into I kind of wrecked this journal, but really make it pretty. The first page I worked on this week is the one that says to fill with circles. So I have two sets of brush tip markers here. For some reason, I only ended up using the Recollections one just because I liked the color combo that I chose and then I didn't want to add any more from the color in pack. Both are great sets. You might recognize them from my haul video and I wanted to test more of the marker packs in this Rectus journal so you guys can see how they work a little bit better. So I'll give a little mini review on the Recollections markers. They don't bleed through the page unless you would layer it up a lot, but if you're just doing a light layer like I am here, it's not going to bleed through to the back, or at least it didn't for me. The tips in general on these, I may need to test them out a little bit more to get a better feel, but I think these ones are more bendy and therefore a tiny bit harder to use than the color in ones and maybe the Tombos, which you'll see later. So these are a little bit trickier to get the hang of if you're not used to using brush tips because they do kind of bend a little bit more than the others from what I have noticed. But I did catch on pretty quickly and get the feel for it, so they're not that hard to pick up on. I stuck with the kind of muted or pastel color scheme and I'm just placing different size circles all around the page. Now I'm going in with the Faber-Castell black fine liner pen and I'm alternating between the small and medium thickness of tips for a little bit of variation in the lines. I decided to do kind of a florally, leafy, and petally design I guess. So I'm just drawing, oh and swirls too, but I'm just drawing a bunch of different types of flowers. Some with rounded petals for a more soft look and others with jagged triangular petals just to give it more variation. And I did also go in with a white gel pen on little tiny areas around the page to give it a little bit more of a contrast. This is what I ended up with. I think it's a lot different than most pieces that I've created over the years, so it was a nice switch and something that I would enjoy doing again. I think this piece in total took around two and a half hours-ish, if you guys are wondering. Now let's move on to the stain log page. One of the newer slime trends that I've been noticing a lot lately on YouTube is making slime backwards. Now, I didn't want to create an entire video for it because I didn't want my viewers who don't care for slime to get really bored and not have something to watch this week. So I decided to compromise and put a little bit of slime in this video and a lot of other stuff too. I had no idea that this was a thing and I didn't really realize how different it would be to make it this way. Honestly though, the best part about this is just watching the satisfying mixing of ingredients. It looks cool when you make slime the regular way as well, but just look at this. Look at the food dye branch out or blossom out into the contact solution here. And then I of course sprinkled in glitter and I'm using a Nerdy Nummies spatula for any of you guys who uh, maybe recognize that. I have been watching Rose's channel for so many years and I think she makes the cutest things so I had to support her by purchasing this a few weeks ago. I also got the really cute heart molds and I think dinosaur ones, they're so cute. After placing those three ingredients in the bowl, I got a little bit distracted by how pretty and cool that it looked so I totally skipped out on the baking soda which was a terrible, terrible mistake because it didn't come together on camera for you guys to see. So I apologize. I'm going to try this again with a different color in a second, but it did form slime eventually. I just had to mix in the baking soda afterward, which doesn't really classify as making it backwards then. So I wanted to do it properly. Same steps here. I'm doing contact solution first 
and a ton of purple food coloring because we are doing the stain page in this video and I want the slime to leave a print on the page so it has to be extra pigmented. Again, I want it to be super glittery though just because glitter makes everything better and now look how cool the clear glue looks in here. At first I thought it looked like a pearl necklace but now that I'm staring at it more it might kind of look like intestines and that's gross, okay. I did add the baking soda this time if you look closely so what you're seeing here on screen is actual footage real time of it coming together well not real time it's sped up but I didn't cut anything out and do any editing magic it came together and it's working out I did have to add some white glue because I ran out of clear I have to go stock up on some more but I like the color it turned out with the white added so if you are wondering the difference between making slime backwards and forwards is that when you make it backwards like this and add the glue last, I find personally that it's harder to mix it together and gauge how much glue you're gonna need at the end. Because I did use over a bottle for this, one of the little bottles. At first it was a little too rubbery, so that's why I did add more and more glue to get it to be more stretchy and slimy. Now I'm gonna work on the log. The two first editions, of course, are the different slimes that I made. I'm gonna press those on the page and let them sit there for a few hours. This next one that looks kind of gross is tomato paste and also a raspberry that I smashed with the spoon. I was only planning to leave these on the page for a couple hours but I got really tired and I decided to film in the morning so these have been on overnight and the slime is sticking to the page and it ripped a little bit so I do not recommend leaving slime on paper overnight because it's glue obviously so it's going to kind of rip a little bit at the page. And the tomato paste was not easy to get off either. Next, you can see I'm testing some different nail polishes. The Crackle one didn't do anything spectacular, but it does look pretty. And of course, more and more glitter. Glitter everywhere. Here, I'm trying some Pearl X powder. It doesn't really look that shimmery on the page, but it's a pretty color, so it's a nice addition. Ladies and gentlemen, I have smelled a book, licked a book, and now I'm gonna kiss the book. Let's get some extra lipstick. Miranda Sings lipstick, ready? Who is yelling? Stop yelling. We're gonna do this. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm like, I'm preparing. <laughs> Ooh, those are some luscious lips. Not saying that these lips are luscious, but with the extra lipstick around, <laughs> these are. Here I used a toothpick to smear some pure vanilla extract on the page. And now I'm using water combined with paprika and also cinnamon to see what those look like. I know in my haul I showed a couple ombre gradient stamp pads. I didn't want to use them for this because I'm using such a tiny stamp and you wouldn't have been able to see the gradient effect. But here I'm using a lip stamp and it's kissing the page. And here's everything else that I tested. I thought it would be boring to show everything on camera, but here are the final results. And I do recommend if something such as the lipstick or cinnamon is going to rub off to spray it with a fixative. The final page that I did this week, I've been putting off for a really long time because I wanted to come up with something rather creative. I've seen on Google Images that a lot of people use this circle as a moon, which are beautiful, beautiful pieces of art, and I love all of the ones that I've seen, but I wanted to do something a little bit different. I decided to either do a gumball machine or a snow globe. Now I really wanted to do a gumball machine because if you look back on my channel I've done quite a few different gumball machine related DIYs. I think they're so cute but the reason that I chose to do a snow globe instead is because the base of the gumball machine would have been hidden by the words on the page. The snow globe has a shorter base so I went with that and plus winter is coming soon. It's actually here in Ohio so no really it's not but technically it's so cold and I think it snowed last night. I didn't really have a specific design in mind for the background so I'm just doing really abstractness. The swirly guy at the bottom kind of does look like a curled icicle so I guess we'll go with that. And maybe those raindrop shapes at the top could actually be frozen rain or sleet or hail. So yeah I think it's fitting. I don't really know what else to talk about here but I did forget to let you guys know about the Wreck This Journal playlist so if you haven't seen all the previous ones 1 through 16 you can watch them by clicking the link in the description box below. At first I was thinking to just do blues and make it look extra wintry but I really wanted to put tons of colors so I did that. As I mentioned earlier, the Color In brand markers and Recollection brush tip markers, those don't really bleed through to the back of the page 
And also Tombos are pretty good at not bleeding. You might be able to see them a little tiny bit if you do a couple extra layers on accident, like if you color over spots too much. But the ones that you do see the most on the back are the Stabilo ones or Stabilo. I'm kind of sad because there's so many colors. I have 30 different colors in the pack, but they do show up a little on the back. I should have flipped to show you. I guess when I do that page in the future, you guys can see it, but it's not terrible. And also the Aqua Spectrum ones, those do kind of show through a little as well. But they are so smooth to color with. I love coloring with the Aqua ones. After doing all the background patterns, I went in and colored the base of the snow globe with a gray Prismacolor pencil and a silver one. I didn't really want to have any gray scale outside of the circle, but I thought that this looked best. I could have done gold and I guess that would have been more like color, I don't know. But anyway, then I went in with a pencil and I drew this really tiny snow snow globe scene with snow drifts, a tree, a snowman, and another tree. And then there's a little highlight at the top to show that lights are reflecting off the glass and some little tiny round snowflakes. Snowman guy has a hat and a scarf. He's already, oh my gosh, I forgot his arms. I just realized I forgot his arms. Oh my gosh. Okay. That's hilarious. I guess he is armless. Maybe he doesn't have to have arms. He's hiding them under his scarf because it's cold outside. Let me know if I should add arms in the future and also in the comments below, let me know which page from this video is your favorite. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned for next week's videos, Friday and Sunday. But now it's a little wish out, wish out, wish out. Boop, 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 boop. Hi. <laughs> I'm so lame. It's an S for Sierra. Sierra. <laughs> I don't know why I'm like this. That's enough. I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. I will see you very soon. Bye. Yes, I'm annoying. I know. <laughs>